My mommy always told me there is no such thing as monsters, real monsters, but there are. We are a band of 8 to 12 looters. We have some basic military training and we move from place to place like locusts devouring everything in our path. Our group is armed with light weapons and can develop and follow simple plans of attack. We take what we want by force of arms. We prefer none of our victims survive because that could cause problems for us in the future. It has been six months since the economic collapse. You and the other five members of your party have settled into what may be a long grinding existence. The everyday tasks of growing and gathering have now become routine. The news from the outside is extremely limited, but you don't really miss it much. Life is simple, but physically demanding. While you have been farming, I've been learning the best tactics to employ to seize your property and your goods. I've been refining them since we hit the road right after the lights went out. We have conducted eight hits so far and have been successful seven times. Here are some of my lessons learned. Intelligence gathering and target selection is critical to my success. Targets include those who have large quantities of fuel, food, and other valuable supplies. Our posse is constantly questioning anyone and everyone we contact, searching for this, our next victim. Anyone who's ever had knowledge, ever even secondhand, of your preparations is someone of interest to us. We may approach them directly or indirectly. If anyone knows something, we will find out about it. Who seems well fed? Who still has transportation? Who has lights? Who was prepared? Where are they exactly? Somebody talks, either in person or on the radio. They always do. We search for victims day and night. During the day, we're listening for the sounds of machinery cars, tractors, gunfire, or generators. Day or night, without a lot of wind, those sounds can carry for miles. At night, we look for any sort of light. Even a small flash indicates somebody with electricity, and that means a rich target. We always have somebody listening to the scanners for any news, leads, or insecure chatter. Once we find a target, reconnaissance of your retreat is our next step. Only a fool would try to rush in and try to overwhelm a group of survivalists. We had a bad experience with that during our second hit. Now we spend at least a day or two trying to size up a large opportunity and the best way to take it down. We will observe retreat activity from a nearby concealed location. We will get an idea of your numbers, weapons, routines, and so much more by careful surreptitious observation. If your group seems alert, we will try and trigger a false alarm with a dog or a child to watch your reaction to the threat. That helps us know how you respond where you are strong and how to attack. We may also obtain topographical maps of the area to identify likely avenues of approach and potential escape routes you will try to use. I may coerce your neighbors into uncovering a weak spot or access point or other important intelligence. I will be listening for any insecure chatter from your radios. Sometimes we will begin the attack when I can engage at least half of your party's military age personnel in one coordinated effort. 
We will infiltrate our team into concealed positions around your retreat within 50 to 75 yards. We will target any identifiable leadership with the first volley. Two-thirds of our people will engage personnel. The other group will target your communications antennas, surveillance cameras, and any visible lighting assets. I want your group unable to see, communicate, or call for help. The members of our band will each fire two magazines in the initial exchange. Two-thirds of our group will change to a new concealed position and wait. One-third will fall back into an ambush of the most likely avenue of escape. We will stay concealed and wait until you come out to attend to your wounded and dead. And we repeat the attack as necessary until all resistance is crushed. For one hit, we used an old truck. We forced a refugee to drive it to the retreat gate. We concealed half of our group inside the truck. The truck was hardened on the inside with some sandbags around the edges. And the other half of our group formed an ambush concealed inside the tree line along the driveway. We killed the driver to make it look good and had one person run away. And those preppers almost waited us out. After nearly three hours, they all walked down the driveway. They were bunched up in a group intent on checking out the truck and driver. It was like shooting fish in a barrel. They didn't consider that there might be additional danger lurking nearby, inside the truck. And they all died. A few weeks ago, we surprised and captured a couple of women out tending a garden. It was totally by chance. We were traveling through a very rural area on our way to another town when somebody heard a tractor backfire. We immediately stopped and I sent a small team to recon the noise. They bumped into a small party tending a field in the edge of their retreat. They seized two women and immediately dragged them back to our vehicles. We began negotiating by sending a finger for each one back to the retreat under a white flag. The rest was easy. We typically infiltrate quietly at night to prearrange start points. We begin our attack just before dawn, when your senses are dulled by the long night's watch or from sleep. Based on our reconnaissance, we divided your retreat into positions or zones that need specific attention. We prepare for the battle by using an air rifle to target any lights or cameras. Our first priority is to engage any site and destroy or degrade them as much as possible. I split my forces into two supporting groups. One group keeps the target position under constant fire. The other group also fires and maneuvers. Closing on the target and destroying it with gunfire or improvised weapons. Many times these positions only have one occupant and the task is relatively easy. Often these positions are easy to spot and they're too far from each other to provide any effective mutual support. If you fall back into your residence, we will set up a siege. If we can maneuver close enough, perhaps by using a distraction, we will pump concentrated insecticide into your building or we can introduce propane gas from a portable tank into the house and ignite it with tracer fire. Don't underestimate us. It could prove fatal.